So if the man box is so harmful and it causes so many negative impacts, why do boys and men feel like they need to adhere or comply to the norms um, and the behaviors that the man box sets out for them? It's a great question. So if, if, if these rigid expectations about what it means to be a man are generally harmful for men and boys and society, uh, why do we adhere to them? And, and, and first, I think we have to understand the, uh, you know, decades of socialization about what it means to be a man, how we pass that on from uh, one generation to the next. Tony Porter, who does a lot of work around men's issues, uh, you know, tells a story about uh, his own father uh, and uh, his uh, inability to express emotion or to cry uh, uh, even uh, in at the time of his own son's old, his older brother uh, uh, his death, uh, and then how when he had a boy and a girl, how he noticed the different way that he reacted to his son and to his daughter when they were expressing weakness or were crying. So his daughter he tended to, you know, cuddle her and say, "Oh, it's okay, Daddy's here." And that with his son, he had kind of a very short fuse before he was saying, now buck up, you know, calm down, uh, you know, go back to your room and come back when you can talk to me like a man. And so, uh, you know, what happens is these expectations are kind of subliminal and unconscious in many ways and get passed from generation to uh, generation. And they become very, uh, very powerful uh, because they kind of get, get passed on. And when you step out of that box, then you're often, um, you know, uh, there's a fear around that. One of the most important things I think that the research shows that's really interesting is that most men think that other men will react more negatively to expressions of vulnerability or weakness or asking for help then uh, then other men actually do react. So in other words, there's a collective fear among men about seeing being seen as weak uh, or not strong or not being able to deal with it, if you will. Uh, and I think the same thing is true even around uh, issues of sexuality, where this prevailing idea that most men are misogynistic and see women a certain way mean that often men who uh, don't feel that way go along with it, especially younger men, uh, because they don't want to appear out of the norm. And then when you actually look at the research, you find that most uh, men are uh, less misogynistic than most other men think they are. And so in other words, there's a kind of a collective, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, chain almost on men even being their most authentic selves. That's why it's so important to confront and be aware of the box, right? Be aware of this set of expectations about what it means to be a real man so that we can do something about it. Because it does have, you know, real consequences. And one we didn't talk about earlier, for example, uh, is uh, men are much less likely to seek uh, mental health uh, pr practitioners, much less likely to seek help uh, in terms of uh, going to the doctor uh, for a medical issue. And therefore, it's not surprising that uh, men have poor health outcomes and are more likely to uh, die by suicide than, than women are because, uh, I think in part, because of the man box. And, you know, don't be weak, don't express emotion, you know, gut it out which can, you know, is very powerful for men. If we can maybe dive a little bit deeper and get a bit personal, how has the man box as a man impacted you? Um, what, what did that do for you as a, as a young boy or now as an adult? 
You know, in terms of me personally being impacted by the, the man box, uh, of course, I've, I've been impacted uh, by the, the man box. And I've seen the impact of the man box uh, in others. I think of a particular time when I was uh, probably in my late 20s and I had a particularly devastating uh, breakup with my girlfriend at the time who broke up with me. And I didn't want that to, to be the case. And I and it sent me into a you know meaningful depression. And I remember having two friends and I were going to a swimming pool uh, at a work event that we were at, uh, staying at a hotel. And I started sharing with them uh, how I was feeling, and I really was quite depressed at the time. And uh, and you know I had a real fear of expressing that that weakness, even though I really needed, I needed help, I needed to reach out. And I remember the way that the, these two, you know, really very good men uh, reacted with something like, well, there's a lot of fish in the sea, and you know, you'll get over it. And yeah, it's tough. But you know, buck up, don't, don't, don't worry about it. And you know, so they were playing in the man box. Uh, and, uh, and I played in the man box and just, you know, suppressed my feelings. Uh, and while the outcome turned out okay, uh, I think for many men, and maybe in another situation in my life, because I have had depression and earlier in my life, suicidal thoughts, uh, that, uh, you know, maybe that outcome would not have been uh, a positive outcome. And I was aware of my unwillingness to say, no, look, guys, I really need help. I need to talk about this. I'm devastated. And so I think that's an example of a time in my life when I've been impacted by the man box. John, I just want to say thanks for sharing your story, firstly, with us. Um, I think it speaks volumes about how the man box impacts someone's life in real time.